Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and my continuing series for Astro pre-install. Today I'm moving away from the software and drivers you need to install to get everything working to what you might want to install simply because it's handy to have. I'll be looking at planetarium programs today and in particular Stellarium which is what I use. Now these programs are handy on their own for pre-planning sessions etc and finding targets but depending on the imaging software you use you may be able to get interconnectivity between them. I use APT which has interconnectivity with a number of different planetarium programs and you can do things like sync locations for your mount with it or even receive locations from the planetarium program to uh, move your mount to. So without any further ado, let's head on to installing and configuring Stellarium to work with everything. So if you follow the link in the description, the first one, it will take you to the Stellarium homepage where you can simply select your OS across the top here and install the latest version. But if you are using APT or are planning to, I suggest avoiding this one. Uh, this version and several previous versions have a connection issue with APT which Ivo has been told will be fixed in the next version. So if you're planning on using APT what I suggest is following the second link which will take you to the download of version 0.22.0 um, this is a slightly older version, but I found it quite stable and no issues connecting to APT. There are some later versions that will connect no problems to APT, but the stability was the real problem for me with them. I found them crashing quite, quite regularly. So download whichever version you feel like. If the new version's out, uh, 23.4 or later, uh, you might want to try one of them. But for now, it doesn't matter which one you download as the setup and configuration for them are all basically the same anyway. So download the one you want and away we will go again. As always, simply go to wherever you've downloaded the program to and double click on the install file. And this will install Stellarium to your computer and quite quickly actually accept the agreement, uh, default location works, Stellarium, desktop icons if you want and install. Now this will put a couple of shortcuts on your desktop. Um, I never use one of them, I end up deleting the other one anyway. I end up deleting this one as two because I put them on my taskbar <laughs> eventually so they're handy and not cluttering up the screen. So let this just run through um, as I said, this is version 0.22.0. Um, I don't think you'll see much difference with the newer versions at the moment. Uh, da -da -da. I love waiting for programs to install. And there we go. Just click finish. Uh, you get the user guide here. The Stellarium, Stellarium angle mode, I don't use that. I think that's something to do with if you have older video cards and drivers. Um, I've no use for it, but I just use the normal Stellarium one. So now we all need we need to do is to launch it by double clicking on it. Now this takes a couple of minutes to it to open up. Oh, not a couple of minutes, but a little while to open up. And it also once it starts and you go into your targets no matter how many times you've done it um, it will start downloading various files for you as you see downloading or loading nebulae and that that can slow it down for a few seconds while it's doing all that but once it's done it's fine okay now the first thing you might want to do is set your location you need to know where it is um, I've mentioned this to Ivo for APT and hopefully um, it will work uh, where APT can send the location to uh, your planetarium or in this case Stellarium so you won't have to bother setting it here either so I'm just going to set my own place uh, turn off get location from network and because simply because it gets me in the wrong place um, so I'm just going to set up a fake location here uh, it doesn't matter how you enter this 
Uh, I go minus 36 because I'm in the southern hemisphere. Uh, east 150 will do me. 151, there we go. My elevation, if you use the arrows, it goes up by hundreds. Um, but I'm about 20, so I'll just 20. Um, you can use GPS. I've never been able to get it to work, but that might be my GPS recorder that's doing that. Uh, name the location. This is not home. Um, I'm in Australasia. And thank you. For some reason you got to click that on and off to get this to work, otherwise it's got me in the wrong place. Uh, oops. Australia, Sydney's good enough. That's the time zone I'm in. Uh, enable daylight savings, yes. And um, add to list. So it's added to the list. And use current location. So that's set to be my current location. And it's now my, my default one. Every time I start up, it will start at this location. Um, I will be changing it later to be the, my real location. But uh, that'll be close enough for now. Now the next part you need to configure first is if, well you don't have to, but if your program can talk to your planetarium, in this case you know, with Stellarium, I need to go to the configuration window and set it up so it can do it. So I go right over to plugins and down the bottom of the list there's one or two you might want to do. Now if you want to control your telescope through Stellarium you need to go through and enable telescope control and first you need to do load startup that's all you can do at the moment um, with both these plugins that we're going to do you need to restart Stellarium for them to load up and then you can configure them. So there's my telescope control the other one you want is remote control. And that's done so both of those now will launch at startup and what we need to do is quit Stellarium and come back in again. So close that window. Down the bottom here on the right just click the button and it's gone. So now I need to restart it again. And once it's done we can configure both those to work. Um, I'm just going to pause this for a second. I need to go check and make sure my mount is connected because otherwise I won't be able to connect to it and of course yes it was plugged in and turned on so now what we do is back into your configuration files over to your plugins now the first one we'll set up is the remote control and this allows other programs or even websites if you enable it to be able to send information or receive information from uh, your from Stellarium so I go in here server enabled uh, enable it automatically on startup and it's that starts the server to, for the communications uh, you don't need to change the port number um, access requires authentication so you can put a password in it if you like if you're only on your local network that's fine I uh, wouldn't worry about it um, the next one is enable cause for the following or origin if you have a website like Telescopius or Telescopius does it um, where it can send data to Stellarium um, for anything you're looking at on there um, you can enable that through here I'll leave that up to you whether you want to do it um, but what that is is if you click on that you can enter the website name um, like I use HTTPS uh, Telescopius.com or whatever they are slash and if you put a star any section from that website will be able to communicate but I'm not going to enable that for now I'll just leave that and when I do that I'll put a password on it anyway so restart server and you're done save settings so now this will start and you'll be able to communicate between different programs and Stellarium so that's done so the next one we're going to move on to is our telescope control and you only need to do this if you want to be able to control your mount from Stellarium so to do that we go to configure and we need to add one to connect to so oops um, which one is it the plus one that one there <laughs> my brain's not working uh, there are a number of ways you can connect to it I'm using an ASCOM driver so I go to ASCOM uh, you can name it 
So at the moment I'll na name it my EQ six R. Okay, um, J two thousand is what I use. I suggest staying on that. Um, you can set it to connect it on startup. That's up to you again. Then you need to go down and uh, choose your ASCOM device. I'll go in here and from here I pick my EQ mod ASCOM and OK. Um, use field of view indicators. Um, yeah, why not? Uh, you can or you can. You can change the size of them if you like. And that's it for there. So I'm set up. Click OK and then click connect. As you see it's connected to the mount and as you see up here is the reticle. That's where my mount is currently pointing and now I can use APT to actually control it. Um, if I click on something over here because it's my mount number one if I hit control one it will move the mount to that location. Um, I'm not going to do it at the moment because my mount's inside and I'm worried about it running into something if I do it. But that's how that works. Um, actually I might do it. No, I won't. I won't. Um, but if I go into the background um, you will see that my mount driver is loaded and working. Uh, it wouldn't have gone anywhere if I'd done it anyway because the mount's still parked. So there we go. And that's it for setting up Stellarium. Um, with that you will be able to communicate between your program and Stellarium and it will work if your program supports it. So I might finish this one off here for now. Oops, I'll go back in and disconnect and, and everything else. Go into Stellarium. I mean you don't really need to disconnect, you can just shut down the program and it will disconnect it automatically. So it's gone. So there you go, that's Stellarium set up and ready to work with your image capturing software. There are probably some few other things you'll need to do in Stellarium like set up your uh, cameras and telescopes to so you can get the proper field of visions and everything else but that's a bit more in depth and I might cover that on another video. But for now I'll just say take it easy everyone, clear skies and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.